Hey everyone, I'm Josh from a Solutions Architect with Threatscape's Global World Warning Microsoft Security Practice. Today we'll be looking at some tips around the Bender Suite. In particular, we'll be looking at the anti-phishing policy and the user and domain impersonation protection settings. Malicious actors use a variety of different techniques when constructing malicious emails, including impersonating the senders of a target organisation or the third parties that they work with. From a user's perspective, this looks legitimate, but we know that it's not. User and domain impersonation protection allows us to protect uh, internal or third-party users or internal third-party domains from impersonation as well as control where these emails ultimately get delivered to. So now that you know what it does, let's get into a demo. Before we begin, I would just like to make you aware that the user and domain impersonation protection settings are available in Defender for Office 365 Plan 1 and above. In order to configure these settings, we must use an anti-phishing policy. So we'll start off by going to email and collaboration on the left here, clicking policies and rules, Threat policies, and then we select anti phishing. We actually have two users that we're going to be using as a test. We've got Adele and Alex. Adele will have the protections and Alex won't. So we'll have a little look at the default policy, which applies tenant wide, and of course that will include Adele. So as you can see, we've got some of the protections set up here from impersonated user protection and impersonated domain protection. And we can see, of course, these are also getting quarantined for those emails that will be found that way. And if we look at the user impersonation protection, we can see mod administrator is being protected with this email address as well, which is msdx686, which is the same domain for this tenant. We're going to be sending an email from msdx731 as mod administrator, which is going to be caught as uh, user impersonation protection for Adele. And if we pivot over to the no impersonation one, you can see that this is only applied to Alex. But of course, if you're testing this in your own environment, you can create your own anti-phishing policy and mimic the same rules that you've got in place and add these additional settings and, and test the experience of how that will work for you guys. But if we pivot over into Alex's mailbox, we can see we've got an email from Mod Administrator, msdx731. Uh, so that's a different tenant and it's got the same display name similar email address but it's still been allowed in. It did actually get delivered to his junk email but that's for different reasons other than the user and domain impersonation. And if we look at Adele's mailbox we can see there's nothing in our junk email from mod administrator from the other tenant and nothing in the inbox. And if we pivot over to the explorer we've already looked uh, for the subject here and we can see two emails one to Adele and one to Alex. The Alex went to the junk email folder and the one to Adele went to quarantine. And we can actually see the reasons in the email entity page. You can see detection technology says advanced filter impersonation user. And in this section here, we can also see it was user and display name. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos and subscribe if you found this useful.